Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about what's known as the Schultz Star. An object that's relatively close to our solar system that we think may have actually passed through the outer solar system about 70,000 years ago. Welcome to What The Math. So first, let's actually talk a little bit about what Schultz star is and why it's actually called Schultz star. And uh, then we're going to see if it had any significant effect on our own uh, solar system. So right now, I'm basically zooming into the main object here. This is right there in the middle, the Schultz star A, also known as y, Y's uh, J0720 0846A. The reason it actually is called Schultz Star, and this is very, very unconventional, is because uh, back in 2013, the astronomer by the name um, Ralph Dieter Schultz was basically the first to kind of unofficially discover and publish a paper about these. Normally, we don't name stars after people who are still around, people who are still alive, but this time it did happen because, I guess, it's not really official yet, and because it's not the actual designation of this star system. Schultz A, as I'm going to refer to it from now, um, is essentially what's known as a red dwarf. It's a star that's going to be around for a very, very long time, very similar to stars like Trappist-1 and also nearby um, Proxima Centauri. And it's approximately 8% uh, of the mass of our own sun. It's just massive enough to have a nuclear reaction, but not massive enough to be a sun-like. In other words, it's, it's a star that has a slightly different, more active um, outer shell. Basically, here there's a lot of flares, there's a lot of uh, activity going on. It might also have some planets around it, we, we don't really know much about it just yet. But what's important is that it has a companion, and its companion is known as Schultz B. And its companion is not really as massive, and for this reason it's actually a brown dwarf. It's known as a brown dwarf. Here the mass is actually just a little bit less. Um, it's about 62 masses of Jupiter, uh, whereas the other star is about 86 masses of Jupiter. And in this particular case, both of them together uh, are approximately 15% the mass of our own sun. So there is its companion in the background. So if this is about 8% the mass of the sun, this is about 6 to 7%. So it didn't just make it to that star uh, club because it didn't really have enough mass and so it retained its brown dwarf status. So these two stars, they orbit around one another approximately every four years and the distance between them is about uh, 0.8 astronomical units, which is 80% the distance of sun to earth or basically around 130 million kilometers. So every four years they kind of do this um, orbit around one another. Now, the reason we're talking about this is because we are now um, are almost certain that about 70,000 years ago, this binary system passed through our Oort's cloud, basically our outer solar system. It was at a distance about, of about um, 50,000 astronomical units or approximately 0.8 light years away and may have actually disturbed quite a lot of outer objects including comets and whatever else is out there. And obviously a lot of those comets may be headed uh, toward us now and because we've discovered that the system did pass through the solar system there's obviously already naysayers and uh, doomsday predictors saying that Either something had already happened uh, that was caused by this passage or something that will happen relatively soon. But here's the thing. Because this happened only 70,000 uh, years ago, and let's actually maybe switch to Universe Sandbox for a second. And because it happened at such a far away distance, so let me actually show you how far away it is. So remember this right here is our Earth. And we're going at a distance uh, of approximately 50,000 astronomical units away from our system. So really, 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 really far away. So about this much. So let's actually place um, a red dwarf here. 
and also give it some sort of a companion that will represent the brown dwarf that it has orbiting around it and basically sh uh, see how it affects our solar system so right now i just need to give this a companion and we're just going to call it shows b and so there is that brown dwarf and there is that red uh dwarf star called short star so let's decelerate this a little bit and here we go so this is a short star passing through our solar system and the distances here are really really dramatic in other words even if it did disturb anything in this particular region of space which it probably has or even a little bit closer to the sun it would actually take up to about two million years for these objects to make it into our inner solar system and come close to our planet Earth and then potentially cause some sort of a distraction on the surface. So that's two million years. That's a long time from now. This happened 70,000 years ago, right? So we still have over 1.9 million years to go. Now, obviously that doesn't mean that uh, nothing bad will happen to Earth in the next few uh, hundreds of years, because these events, these passages of stars actually do happen uh, relatively frequently. As a matter of fact, we think every two million years, there's at least one star that passes relatively close to our sun, um, possibly within about one light year. And um, a closer approach might happen every nine million years. So it's possible that two to nine million years ago, something else passed by in that region. We don't know what yet. But those comets that it, it disturbed maybe actually are passing by or headed toward our um, central inner, uh, inner solar system right now. So obviously this is a speculation because we don't know, we don't have any evidence on it. We don't know what star may have passed here. But we know that the short star did pass uh, by in that region. And we know that in about 1.9 million years, we might feel the effects. Now, this is what it actually may have looked like 70,000 years ago. Right there, there's a show star. This is what it probably looked like from Earth. So in other words, the ancient ancestors of you and I, the ancient human beings, may have been actually looking into the night skies, which were back then very, very dark because there were no uh, light pollution of any kind, and may have seen our sun, but also this other tiny spot right there that uh, was surprisingly red and unusually bright uh, compared to other stars in the skies and uh, may have also given them um, songs to sing about, stories to tell, and they probably thought it was some sort of a god and or demon in the skies because it did look slightly different from other stars that were more or less white or blue in color. Although it may have actually appeared similar to Mars in some sense. So in that sense, uh, this was a very interesting discovery and a very interesting passage um, of a star that we discovered not so long ago, not so far away from Earth. But I guess what is interesting is to discover more similar objects that may have actually passed by our um, outer solar system about two to nine million years ago, just so that we can actually now start looking for objects that they may have disturbed and that might actually be headed our way. For we know Oumuamua uh, is such one object. Maybe, just maybe, it's actually a um, an outer solar system object that was disturbed by something two million years ago and now has actually entered the inner solar system. But there is obviously no evidence to suggest that just yet, but it, it, there is a possibility. But other than that, that's really all we know about the short star and his companion. That's all we've discovered so far. And maybe in, in, uh, in the future, we'll be able to find some kind of an exoplanet orbiting around either the companion or the central star known as the short star. Just like Trappist and Proxima, um, they can definitely have uh, objects in the habitable zone. And just like Proxima and just like Trappist-1, they'll probably suffer from the same problems of having quite a lot of solar flares to deal with. But that's another story for another day. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you learned a little bit more about the short star and now you know that there's nothing to worry about for at least 1.9 million years, but it's still a very interesting discovery. Space out, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. 
Let's finish this video by maybe accelerating the system just a little bit to see how these two stars start orbiting around one another. And let's also see and compare how this looks like in Space Engine because it's a lot more beautiful here as well. Anyway, space out. Bye bye.